Welcome to another episode of Lifestyle After Five. Now, if you've been following us this far, then you know that me and Lord Shu are on a journey to reinvent ourselves in six months. We're trying some stuff that we haven't tried before, some things that I find difficult, and we're just working through our challenges. How's it going for you so far, uh, Lord Shu? Okay, so just this week alone, I've compressed a lot of stuff and simplified a lot of stuff. So it's definitely working so far. Well, today we're going to talk about why reading non-fictional books daily would transform your mind. You know, the, the thought of that sounds kind of funny how, you know, and I used to be told this as a kid, but it was kind of hard to believe that, you know, reading a book can open up a whole new world. But it's true. And, I, and I've said this before in different podcasts where I once heard uh, a preacher speak and he said, the only thing that makes an engineer an engineer, a doctor a doctor is the books you read and practice. And that's true. Yep. The books you read is the only way to attain knowledge. You know, if you go back and you look, if you look at the Vatican, the Vatican got a whole vault of miles of books that only the Pope can read. Yep. Only certain people got access to this knowledge. Uh, this used to be knowledge that everybody had access to and Ancient cultures across the world. Now, not only this guy can read it. So, but like I said, I, you know, reading a book, a nonfiction book, and even sometimes a oh, fiction yeah. book, you know, will unlock a whole new perspective. You know, boosting your mental sharpness daily, making you think of things in a different way. You see the whole world in a different light. You you expand yeah. your knowledge. I mean, it introduced you a wide range of topics. Yeah, and even the like, vocabulary. Uh, no, nah, for sure. Vocabulary, for sure. Um, we talked about this before, actually, uh, how people that don't know how to express themselves. Well, if you don't know how to express yourself, go read some books. It's going to help expand your knowledge and it'll help you imagine more. I feel like uh, as a kid, you, you already naturally have a pretty good imagination and it just kind of gets ripped away from you as you get older. So books kind of keep you there. And nowadays, you even got audio books. So you don't have to physically mm -hmm. read the book. You got audio books. You know, books can really, literally change your income. There's oh, certifications. Yeah. You know, if you are into project management, get you a project management book. Read it. Yeah. Take the certification. Learn Microsoft. Learn coding. You know, there's coding. There's YouTube video, which I, I some will argue the difference. Now, I don't know what your opinion is on it, but I consider even YouTube reading or looking at YouTube videos such as this as a form of book learning. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, most of my knowledge before I went and got like knowledge from or certifications, most of that stuff I was learning on YouTube or uh, like what we be using, Coursera or Udemy. Coursera, yeah. yeah, which requires, mm -hmm. definitely requires reading. Mm -hmm. So that was like a, a main kind of segue, but I always been into reading books though. I mean, nonfiction is, is the way to go. They got so many dummies books, this for dummies, that for dummies now. Like Everybody's a dummy, yeah. but a smart dummy. A smart dummy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know I, if book clubs is as popular as they once was. You know, I, I've taken a few, I've joined a few book clubs in the past and it is really entertainment and stimulating for you know a group of people to get together, read a book, and then you get to sit down and discuss different perspectives because everybody has a different perspective on it. And you challenge each other, you know, depending on the story that you're reading, whether it's a business book or a novel, a crime novel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, critical thinking that comes comes into play when you start reading those books. And then you just start expanding on the knowledge that you already have, too. So I'm just thinking like, like even now, the books that I'm reading, I'm choosing to read real specific books to not only just get the education, but to also like like you mentioned earlier, keep my mind sharp. Also, uh, if, if I had to really go into that part of it, I usually try to... Um, get like different perspectives, like you said, too, or gain like deeper insights to see how can I use this information or notice certain patterns too. like books, actually all of them across the board with uh, anything that you're doing can help you notice certain patterns. But that's just like the polymath talk, really, you know, 
I don't know if everybody sees patterns when they when they're studying or doing research. Well, there are several books that are about that. One of the book that really changed the way I think critically is the mm -hmm. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where yeah. they've got the picture in there, and it's like a Harvard study that they've done. Half the class saw an old woman. Uh, the other half of the class saw a beautiful young woman in this picture, and they argued mm -hmm. back and forth over this picture of who saw what. And then finally the professor came in. And I challenge you to look at this book. Get the book. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have the book, Google the picture of the old lady, beautiful woman from the seven, uh, seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and you'll get to see the picture. And it depends on how you look at this picture. Mm -hmm. You can look at this picture one way, and you'll see a beautiful uh, lady. You can look at the picture and another angle and you'll see an older woman. And the point of that book and what it was the lesson that it was trying to teach out of that is uh, two people can have two different views, but you both be right. Mm -hmm. the, the vision is there. You know, if you for those that saw an old woman, they were right. For those that saw, uh, saw a younger woman, they were both correct. And that's some, sometimes how I look as we get into this political climate. You got right wing, left wing, both arguing over the same thing mm -hmm. when there's facts on both sides and you both can be right. So why we, why can't we expect, respect each other's opinion and move forward together and collab? I agree. As a good episode um, mentioning that type of information is the one that we did with uh, Monty Hodges. Uh, uh, yeah, the Ar Arkansas state rep. Yeah, y'all yeah. need to watch that because that that is kind of like reading a book too. Like Ali said, YouTube is a book, and he basically talks about that same thing. How it's like, um, with the bipartisans, and I'm just like, yo, that that really puts things into perspective because sometimes you might not agree what what Republicans or Democrats say, but sometimes y'all have to come together for the greater good of the people. So well, I, I tell you what what is also was always bipartisan, and you don't hear anything about it, and no argument or complain. Where their pay raises, <laughs> exactly. Next, you know, the house it gets passed. There is no. Now, I've never since I've been in politics seen it where a Republican or a conservative. I don't care how much mm -hmm. the budget is. Oh, we got so much government spending. We got so much inflation. Oh, it's time for pay raise. Oh, we bipartisan on that. Yo, yeah. There's no argument there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, you know, uh, we're reading. You, uh, we reread. As you can see, we're avid readers. So I was just talking to Ali about this earlier today. Actually, I was like, man, I'm I'm reading three books right now. He's like, man, I'm reading one book, but you know, we we just read. We're always reading, and we consuming information to try to be able to give y'all these different perspectives, but also help y'all understand like. Uh, the habits that the people that y'all may look up to have, a lot of them are reading nonfiction books or they're writing nonfiction books. So you should go read their books. Reading also boosts its creativity. Oh, yeah. Hands down. I, I mean, most creative, creative people are readers. Mm -hmm. and it gives them it gives them new ideas and new perspectives to stimulate that creative thinking that they have. You, know, mm -hmm. you get to read all about the world problems. But I challenge you. Don't just read about the world problems or, or even listen to them when you're watching Fox, CNN, whatever floats your boat. Think about how can you solve that problem? Yeah, that's where the money at. That's where the creativity, where the money at. It, anybody can read. I can read and tell you all day long about what the problem is. Yeah, There's no shortage of that. And there's no shortage of problems going around the world. The real winners and the people who make the money are the ones who figure out how to solve the problems and come up with solutions that, you know, that can inspire, innovate, inno even inspire other innovative ideas. Yep. Cause that's the biggest thing about transforming your life. Transforming your life is started with a problem. You not happy about something or you want to make something better. Now you have the information out there to collect and bring those together. For example, you can get a book on entrepreneurship that can spark new ideas for your own business ventures or um, a book about corporate training. If you want to be a, a better, you know, have a better chance in your career to keep going up. You know, there, there's so many resources out there now. And like he said, sparking creativity, you know, uh, 
I, I don't know, but maybe some people might think that getting into corporate is just like uh, you get in there, you already know what your job description is, and you just get in mm-hmm. there and do the work. But that requires a level of creativity to really solve those types of problems on that type of level. You have to be creative yeah. almost. So, yeah. And we're in the information age, so there's no such yeah. thing as I don't know. I feel like this that's going to be the, we're going to make a t-shirt with Ali's face on it saying that we're in the information age. <laughs> Because he, I swear hey, he says I, this every episode. There's no well, excuse. I get tired of everybody. I get so, you don't know, countless of people oh who I've gosh. sat there and I've yes. had these conversations with <laughs> and I've so passionately laid out <laughs> with facts, what, what, they, what we deem as facts in today's time. I know certain things can change in life, but yeah, for sure. here it is, backed by peer review, well-known media outlets, news mm-hmm. sources, and you let the, and you lay out several of them and tell them step by step, and then you throw in your personal experience with things. And I could spend 30, 45 minutes explaining to a person how to do this. And they give you that and stare they, like and they give you this look like, oh yeah, that sounds what? yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's that makes sense. But oh I don't no. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, you do know. I just literally <laughs> told you and explained it to you. Yeah. You know now. You know better. Go do better. You cannot use I don't know as an excuse. Do we have That's to right. like yeah. draw it? <laughs> and we have to draw it for you. You have to implant it in your head. It's like crypto. You can have a whole layout conversation oh, yeah. with people on the use of crypto. And there's crypto ATM machines out there now. Yep. They have a crypto ATF. There's legislation on crypto. And people still say, I don't know about that crypto. That crypto's a scam. That, that, that ain't real. That's a fraud. But y'all still uh uh what's what's the company that owns most of the assets in Black the world? Rock. BlackRock. Um I, I feel like I shouldn't have to say more than that, but I mean BlackRock even invest in crypto i mean governments invest in crypto oh yeah multiple but like i said you can sit down and have a conversation and somebody won't know so if you if you one of those people please go read a book yeah just read just read a book don't ask questions don't don't ask for information you don't want to hear from from me or anybody just go read a book first yeah because we don't know nothing as, as far as we're concerned all our information comes from books <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> Go improve your focus and your concentration. And yeah, maybe that's that's a good people start. can't focus no more. <laughs> people can't focus and they can't concentrate anymore. Maybe it's just too much TikTok. Too out much there. TikTok video. All your favorite. Too much all your favorite. Uh, what I would it call social media personalities? They're getting the information from either if they're if they're factual and not making it up. They're getting it from news sources yeah. and reading and reading. There's so many accounts I see now coming across social media that are literally knowledge driven from books. They go back and they read all those encyclopedias that used to sit in your mama house collecting dust. They went and bought all those off of eBay from your mama. Now they reading them and making TikTok money off of it. Don't be one of those. (laughs) Don't be one of those people that don't do that. Now. One thing you taught me, and we, we talked about it earlier, was setting that reading time. I need to do that because me being in the areas that I am, I'm all over the place. I, I'm i I'm, I'm the multitasking king. I'm trying to take this course. <laughs> I'm trying to take this other course. I'm trying to read over here. I'm trying to do this. And reading teaches the brain to focus and concentrate on one thing. So I need to pick that one reading hour, 30 minutes every day where I just sit down, stop everything, and do that. See, all right, so he, he made a, a, a very good point here. So he said that he has to take the time to read, right? So that already is improving focus and concentration. But I'm not going to lie. I'm the multitask king, too. I mean, like I said before, I'm reading three books. But the thing is, I, I dedicate time to it because I know I can't I can't do it while I'm like, you can doom scroll and edit a video at the same time, but you can't read a book. And edit a video at the same time. It's impossible, man. Like I've tried, okay? Because like I said, I'm I'm the multitask king too, fam. So I'm guilty of doing that type of stuff. But once you start to realize, like, okay, I'm kind of forced to have to choose between one or, one or the other, and then you realize too, like, you got 24 hours in the day, and I know you stay up late, and I get up mad early. So 
I just kind of work with my schedule, bro. Like if I know I'm finna get up early, I try to at least read before I go to sleep or usually right after I get up. If if I don't already have a bunch of stuff planned that day, like meetings and stuff. So 30 minutes, an hour, like it's not a lot of time, but when you're reading a book, 30 minutes to an hour, you really get into a whole chapter. And like you do that every day by the seventh day, you already through half of that or if not the whole book. So just want to put that out there. Mm-hmm. Like, even though I'll be reading a lot of different books at one time, it's just because I put the time in when in between stuff like lunch or whatever. Yeah, I might read while I'm eating. So that's a great way to improve your personal growth and development, mm-hmm. which is what yeah. we're aiming to do in this series. Exactly. So I got to tighten up on my book reading. Hey, but that's that's why we're doing this together, bro. Like me and you and everybody that's watching right now, like we a family. So we got to hold each other accountable. So our the goal for this episode is pick a time in your day in a schedule and and just f- find whatever types of books you need to get moving forward in your conversation as far as business or, you know, career, whatever. Just find that and focus on that. That's that's our goal together for this week. Like I said, Reading a book and if you don't have mentors, anything, books is the, is the way to go. Watching videos such mm-hmm. as this, like I said, it offers practical advice for personal and professional growth, which is what you're looking for. You know, a book on personal finance can teach you how to manage your money better. Yeah. And we all yeah. need that. Exactly. I was going to say, too, um, my I had a mentor used to tell me all the time, like my my uh, mentors are I got some that are alive, but most of my mentors are dead because I I learned from them through books. So a lot of my mentors are dead, too. I learned from a lot of dead people. <laughs> yeah, they provide the best advice. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Actually, that's what scientists do. You know, a scientist yep. will dedicate his whole life studying some type of molecule, atom, space or something. Mm-hmm. He'll die, or she, in some cases. A new developing science, up and coming yep. scientists, are taking pull all pick his or her up. notes together, pick it up from that study, and go forward with it. And sometimes yeah. even rechange the theory. There's some theories like, nope, you were wrong in that deal. This is a new thing, or no, oh, you know, you had it right in that. Yep. Just like we spoke about with the uh, the dark oxygen. Somebody had to go pick up from, you know, where a, a dead, obviously this person probably not alive, or if they are, they're very old. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I mean, you, it it kind of uh, is like continuous learning and self-development, like you said. It you just keeps going. Learn. It's the only way you're going to make it. Mm-hmm. But we challenge each and, every, each and every one of you. Are you ready to transform your mind and elevate your life? You're going to start reading those nonfiction fiction mm-hmm. books with us. Let us know what book you're reading and re- recommend something for us so we make them read yeah. them also to help change our lives and i gave out this uh, seven habits of highly affected people the richest man in babylon is some of uh, one of my favorites also uh rich dad poor dad by robert uh, t kiyosaki mm-hmm. just yeah, just a name, name of a few uh the Four Agreements uh, It's one that I read. And then, you know, I started to get into AI books and four-day work week. But you started to understand when you talk to other professionals and, and, and big people in business, there are certain books yeah. that you have in common. Yep. You know, if you start to look at and talking with CEOs, managers, the majority of them have read Good to Great. Yep. Uh it's how you build relationships. Yeah. Blue Blue Ocean. Uh I can think of the, the name of Blue Ocean Theory or Planning or, or but some of these, these books, it's like come, it's it's almost like the key. Like when you, you can tell a lot about a person, you know, what book have you read? What, what what's some of your favorite books? Mm-hmm. And you should be you should know, you should have some of these books in common. Who moved my cheese? Some of these yeah. you should have if you depending on the industry that you are, there there's like some industry standard books that you should know about yep that is true yeah i i can uh i'll throw some out just the ones i'm reading right now so uh one of them is the stoic path to wealth that's that's actually the main book i'm reading right now and then uh the uh the death of fashion which is 
that book is crazy. Uh, if you are in the fashion industry, you should definitely read that book. And uh, To Die For, I think is the name of the other one. I'm about to start reading that next. So, I mean, I can, I can go on. But yeah, these are like the main things I'm reading right now just because I'm, I'm in the fashion industry. So there's, there's so many ways to synergize because I like stoicism, which is a, f- a form of philosophy. I love finance and I found a book that put them together. So you know, get creative with your books. Try to find books that synergize things you like. Great. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. and We want to thank you all for watching. And if you found this video helpful to you in any type of way, mm-hmm. give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It'll help Please us stop. with our content, help with the algorithm with YouTube to help more people see this type of content. Yep. Also, don't forget to drop us what type of books you're reading in the comments. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Yeah. And then if you really, if you really bold, you'll scan this QR code in the corner next to my head and join our Discord group where everything that we talk about on these courses and in these series, they'll all be in there. But live coming straight from our mouths, talking straight to us. And we got a community in there of people. Mm -hmm. So join in. Let's talk about these books. Let's let's continue this conversation outside of just this video. Great. We'll see you next video. Peace, y'all. Thanks for watching.